Okay, so we, uh, we're in this series called Space, and uh, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago when we first started this series, uh, we talked about Sabbath and what it looks like to rest, and one of the families from church, um, you know, they had mentioned like, hey, my brother-in-law uh, is going to be, or my brother is going to be here in town, he's a pastor, if you need a Sabbath, if you need a break from preaching, uh, you know, he would love to help out. I was like, yes, that sounds great. Uh, no, I... I, uh, I said, I, you know, let me check him out on Facebook, you know, check out the YouTube. Uh, I mean, I, I liked what I saw. I liked what I saw. It was great. Um, this is David McCants. Am I saying that right? That's right. All right. I, I, I butcher names a lot. He's, uh, he's from North Carolina, and you planted a church how many years ago? We planted uh, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Uh, so I, I thought, man... The more I was kind of thinking about it, this week it honestly just hit me uh, because I also found out my brother, this is him, James Hall, my brother, yeah, woo! <laughs> uh, he, he's been involved with a church plant in Lincoln for the last, how many years? Five years. Five years? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I found out both these guys were going to be here visiting on this Sunday, and sometimes, you know, I think Holy Spirit, he just gives you an idea, and I was like, yeah, I like that. I, I thought, man, I would love to have some people who have been involved with a new church from the ground stage, uh, what that looks like uh, to try and, you know, start a church from scratch to be involved with that process. I thought it'd be great for our church, our family, uh, to just hear some stories, uh, hear from you guys a little bit, uh, some of your experiences, what, what it looked like early on. Uh, where it started, where it's going. And so I, I got some questions here we'll go through, but before we do that, I'd love to pray and we'll jump in. And uh, thanks again, church, for being flexible. I know we wanted to be out at Elmwood today. We weren't sure about the rain, uh, but thanks for being flexible and meeting us out here at a view on state. Hopefully we'll finally get a Sunday with no rain next week and, we get out, and we'll get out to Elmwood Park and be at the grotto next Sunday. But it's great to be here together today. Let's pray and we'll jump in with these guys. God, thanks so much for this chance to worship together. Uh, thanks for the fun of uh, getting to run around outside and uh, um, just be together as the church, uh, the whole family, uh, every age group. And we get to celebrate a baptism today. Thanks for everything that's going on in the life of this church family. And uh, I, I just pray right now for uh, this conversation with David and James that, uh, that there would just be uh, something life-giving, something that, that somebody in here today needed to hear uh, an encouragement or a word that you wanted spoken directly to them. And we just pray for this time uh, to just lift up and build up your church. In your name we pray, amen. So here we go. First things first, uh, David, I want to ask you, I, I know I sent you some questions. I'll, I'll probably go off script, but you're good at that, right? Like you're, you're flexible, I'm sure, right? You know, when you're a pastor, you kind of got to be. Uh, but just, would you tell us a little bit about when you guys first started uh, maybe even, how, how'd you come up with your name? I think that's always an interesting thing for new churches. How do you decide on a name? You know, for a long time, it was all just, well, your first Christian church of Omaha, first Christian, you know, everybody was first Christian for hundreds of years. <laughs> well, our, ours is very unique. We're in a coastal town uh, in eastern North Carolina, and the name of our church is Two Rivers uh, Church, and there's two rivers in the town where we're from. I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, it, it got really original there. With better, better than First Christian, you know? Better, better than First Christian. <laughs> no rivers. offense to any First Christians out there, all right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, tricky. We've been doing this for about, um, my wife and I moved to Eastern North Carolina in August of 08, and we were there about seven months, and then we had a grand opening and launched uh, Two Rivers Church in February of 09. So we've been doing church as Two Rivers for about 12 years. And uh, I can say this, this is, um, enjoy, when we were, my wife and I also have twin girls who are 18 this year and graduating from high school. And when they were little, my brother-in-law, uh, my, my wife's brother has an older son and twins and they were a little ahead of us. And I'm like, what advice do you have for twins? He said, just enjoy every part of it. Yeah. Like even when they're little, even when you're up all night, enjoy that, don't rush through anything. And, and I would say the same thing to Revival Church. Yeah. Um, you're in the infancy, you're a year old, enjoy this, because this is neat. I mean, this, um, 
you don't go back to this yeah. once you kind of get a building and you grow up and you get responsibilities. You got a mortgage. It's terrible, right? <laughs> So enjoy this. This is, uh, you, you can, uh, there are things about this phase that are frustrating and difficult, yeah. but it's also a beautiful time in the life of a church. So enjoy it. I love that. That's good. What about you? Your, your church. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience, like in the early stage. Uh, how did they come up with their name? Do you know? Um, yeah, so Mercy City is the name of the church I go to, and they came up with... Um, their name because in the old testament god told them to build like cities of refuge yeah and so they've always just really wanted to be a city of refuge for people where people can receive mercy mm. um so and there's scripture and stuff i don't that's their story <laughs> so there's scripture yeah if you want to hear their story you can come <laughs> sometime and they can share it with you but that's um, good i i showed up I, so me and my wife actually like tried to do it like this out of our apartment and it failed miserably. Yeah. So that's why we went to Mercy City. We went to Mercy City because we needed help and we needed to know like what church planning looked like and we ended up just staying at Mercy City after that. Um, and they uh, just had me serving on the serve team. Yeah. Set up, set up, pack down, right? Yeah. We know what that's like. Set up, tear down every week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't know how much do you want me to talk no, about. No, that's it. good. That's good. What, what, uh, I, I'm curious, what about Two Rivers? Was there a lot of setup teardown early on? Like, where'd you guys meet out of starting out? Well, we, we kind of joked early on that if you could find us, you could worship with us because we, <laughs> that's we revival. That's so revival. Often. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be a trend. Um, yeah, we met first at a community college. Yeah. And we, we signed a lease or, or we signed the, the agreement that they had set up for two years and then, um, one of the VPs got involved and said, we shouldn't have done this. I found out later she's Jewish, so maybe that had something to do with it. Um, so we moved to a um, private school. We met there about three years, and then we met in the high school for about nine months. And uh, in 2014, we moved into, we bought an old uh, building supply company that had gone out of business, and we renovated that and moved in there, so. That's awesome. Yeah. So how many years was that? I lost track, four, about? Yeah, it was about four and a half, five years before we had a permanent spot. Yeah. And I, See, so guys, we're doing fine, all right? Yeah, we're doing fine. Doing, <laughs> you're doing great. Don't, don't rush that. There, uh, again, there's something beautiful about this. We live really close to a, um, we live really close to a, a Marine air station, so we had a lot of young Marines, and we literally would meet Marines uh, on a Sunday morning, and we'd have them pack in the truck after church, you know? Wow. Like, there's certain things that uh, you can do in this stage of life as a church that there just aren't, it's not the same. Yeah. And um, so, you know, don't run from that, embrace that. And um, if you're a Marine here today, you're going to be packing the truck later. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we got a Navy guy that helps Navy, every week. Yeah. Navy man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of our best. <laughs> What about you guys? Where did Mercy City meet in the beginning? What did that look like? We actually met in a middle school. So it was honestly incredible. I like guess it's incredible what God can do with a space. Yeah. Like when you set up church, it, like it's just a middle school auditorium. But all of a sudden you show up on a Sunday and it becomes like yeah. a place where God's presence is going to show up and it looks like church. And I think that's a beautiful thing about this season. It's no, like, no matter where you go, you get to create a space for people to connect with God. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we just got our building like a year ago. Yeah, and we were we're seven years in. So yeah, and kind of a cool like how did the building come about for you guys? What was something unique happened, right? Yeah, I mean our building hunt was hard because we started hunting like in COVID time, so it's yeah. like just hard to find space or really do anything, and so we ended up we really gave up on finding a building. And that's, I feel when, that. that's when God yeah. decided to show up, though. Like, we gave up, and we were like, I don't know. If, if God wants to bring us a building, he'll bring us a building. And so, like, some realtor that they had, like, talked to one time reached out to Pastor Matt and Pastor Kerry, and he's like, hey, I think I found the perfect building for you. So they were like, whoa, let's go look at it, I guess. Like, they yeah. had no other options at that point. So they go look at the building, and um, it's, it's still, a, it was an old school, again, yeah. um, but it, it's been, like, it's like a hundred year old building and it was just, it was the only thing in our price range for the time. And uh, it just ended up being like perfect timing. Really. It was like God's timing. It was the right price, um, the right space. And so they ended up pulling the trigger on that. And it was after they had like done the deal 
there's it's actually like two buildings, one next to each other. And after they had like bought the first building, the second the owner of the second building decided they didn't want to be in there anymore. So they're like, hey, we're just gonna lease this building from you for a while, and then we'll just give it to you. <laughs> like it's yours. So That's we awesome. got like a buy one get one free building. Out of <laughs> That's it's great. The, the math of God, you know, it, it never adds up in our minds, but it's great. That's awesome. Um, okay, I, I'm curious. Like, have you guys both been involved like in the early stages of the setup and tear down? Like personally, like okay, as as, uh, as the lead minister there, has there ever been a time when you're like, all right, I'm retiring from setup team, or is it? St- <laughs> I'm just wondering personally. Like, you know, are we? You know. <laughs> This is, you've kind of set me up here. This is tricky because <laughs> your setup team is over here saying, you know, uh, one thing. They're like, no, nope, no. Nope. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think it's all hands on. It's all for yeah. us. It was always all hands on deck. Yeah. And whoever's there, um, if my sermon was done, I was there. Yeah. Let's put it that way. On yep. a Sunday morning. No. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, that is kind of the beautiful part is everybody comes together and gets mm-hmm. everything going. Um, I, I can tell you this: the people who do tech and worship and set up our saints. I yeah. Mean, they're they're yeah. the people. Yeah. That, yeah. In this stage, um, they're, they're the people that really make it happen and get things set up. And, and uh, I can always, I can tell you this too, that there's always a place for you if you'd like to help. <laughs> I don't uh, In set up. Uh, sign up, turn back. Sign up uh, back. Yeah. Or children's <laughs> ministry. I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah. <laughs> What about you? Were you were involved on the setup team in the yeah, early stages? Yeah, so or? I was like, I pulled trailers. I set up i yeah. tore down um because i i'm a bus driver so <laughs> they were like yeah you can pull a trailer it's not the same <laughs> thing by the way it's very different but that's what I, they had me do i would pull the trailer i'd show up i'd set up and um yeah it's it's challenging honestly like setup is great honestly setup is like set up some moment where you're like yeah we're getting stuff ready like god's gonna show up like people are gonna meet jesus it was a tear down like that was where like we got like a uh, short memory <gasps> Because, like, I forget that people just connected with Jesus because now I'm mad. I just want to go eat lunch, but I got to tear down. But, like, really, it's still a moment where, like, people can meet Jesus because we would have moments in the teardown where new new people would, like the Marines, you know, like you have the moments in the teardown where the presence of God is still present Mm -hmm. with us always, and people will meet Jesus in the whole system that we function with. Yeah, that's good. Okay, well... I just want to know, do you guys have like kind of a, a favorite memory or story that you'd want to share uh, from early on, maybe some of the early days of the church plants? Um, I don't know. There's a, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, <clears throat> I can say that church planting is the hardest and yet the most rewarding thing I've ever done. I, I was in ministry um, probably about 15 years before we planted Two Rivers and um, it's not everybody's called to be a church planter. You know, some, some guys, I've met guys who are at, you know, mega churches, and they say, I don't have what you have. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't have your paycheck. Either. You know, like, it, <laughs> like, maybe that's why. But it, I think God calls specific people for, for specific things. And church planting is hard in this regard. Um, you always feel like you're about three weeks away from the whole thing falling apart. I mean, it really feels like that for a long time. And I, and I can tell you this, Alex, 12 years in now, it feels like four weeks instead of three. That's, <laughs> that's about it. So uh, if that's this any encouragement to you, right? Um, that day's coming, man, uh, for you. Four uh, weeks. I had a lot more hair, so this guy's got great hair. Just Ooh, kiss that now. goodbye, right? Kiss it goodbye. <laughs> Um, but no, uh, moments, I, I don't know, just meeting people, um, who are far from God. I, I think, um, statistics, you know, uh, say that more lost people find Jesus in newer churches. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons to plant new churches. Uh, I think a lot of those are wrong reasons when we were talking a little bit about it this morning, just when we met, yeah. um, for me, the reason to plant a church was there are lost people who need Jesus. Yeah. Um, I would also say, and this is not scientific, but I think less people who are far from Christ are showing up at church these days after post COVID, yeah. which means the church has to get outside of ourselves more often. Yeah. Uh, we have to find reasons and ways to meet people where they are and love them and show them Christ. Um, they might show up here or wherever you're meeting. Um, but likely that's not going to happen. 
So we have to we have to kind of mobilize and go meet them where they are. And so we just we just met a lot of people and uh, seen their lives blossom and become who God created them to be and, and give their lives to Christ. And um, a specific story, I'm sure I'll think of one later, but maybe I'll, I'll if come you get, back. If you to get it. like something that you want to come back to, yeah. Yeah, I was, a, I was praying through the questions this morning, actually, because I wasn't sure how to answer that. Uh, oh, he sent you the questions? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get oh, I'm kidding. He, did, he, <laughs> sent, them to he sent them to me. <laughs> um, and the Lord just really like gave, brought to my remembrance um, my first Sunday, mm. because the Lord wanted to remind me of what it felt like to show up and be in this moment where I get to meet Jesus. And I, um, I think he wanted me to share that with you just because, like, that's what you need to remember in these, these early stages. Because you had a moment where you got to come in, someone set up for you, someone prepared for you, someone gave you a cup of coffee, someone run sound for you, someone did this so that you had a moment to meet Jesus. Yes. So you could be in the presence of God. And that's, uh, that's what we always try to, like, Pastor Matt issue, issues that to us almost every Sunday. Like, why, what's your why? Yeah. Like, why are you coming in serving? Like, why are you coming in? And, it, and it's always that, I always see that moment where I sat and just really experienced the presence of God for, like, really the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing moment. And I'll never forget that moment where I sat in the presence of God all because someone was willing to serve yeah. for, for that moment for me. So That's good. We got some uh, worship music flying here. The band's going to have to go by memory at the end, all right? <laughs> you guys will be fine, all right? Um, maybe uh, was there like a, a hard moment or a hard memory when you're like, I mean, you know, you mentioned you're three weeks away. W was there ever one of those moments that kind of stick out to you, but you saw God deliver, you saw God come through? Anything like that? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's, it's sort of a constant season, you know, seasons. Yeah. There's a season of... Um, difficult times there's a season of um god doing some amazing things and and one thing leads to the next i, I think the hardest thing in church planting because I, I, from my perspective if, if you're doing it the right way and, and everything i know about about alex and your team is that they're trying to do it the right way I, and i really appreciate that and if you're doing it the right way you're loving people and it's not a it's not a um this isn't a business or a transaction. This is people sharing faith in life so that people can grow towards Jesus. And so when people disconnect, it's really hard. And especially when you're kind of young and you don't know, again, what's going to happen in the next few weeks. And it happens all the time. And so we went through a season like that where we had a few people who had been coming for a while. One guy I thought was going to be one of our elders. Yeah. Obviously, he wasn't <laughs> since he left, right? And, um, and it was really hard, and, and um, preachers, I don't know if, if you guys know this, but we take it personal, you know? And that's not strong-arming anybody. You know, if this isn't the right place for you, I'm sure Alex would say, we'll help you find that place. But um, if you're doing it the right way, it's, it's, it's from your heart, and you're trying to love people, and you're trying to lead them to Jesus, and you're investing your life. And so when they leave, it's hard, and it hurts. And um, but what, what I have always seen is when we go through that season, God brings a season of growth. Yeah. And sometimes letting go is the best thing you can do. Yeah. And letting people go ahead and go where they're going to go. And if they're not all in anyway, then they're not what God, they're not who revival needs. They're not who Two Rivers needs. Um, if they're wanting this to be, if they're wanting Two Rivers to be something it's never going to be, it's better for them to go find where that is, where they connect. And, um, and it's, even though it's hard, it's, it's probably better. I don't, know, I don't know if that answers the question. No, that's good. Yeah, that's spot on. Yeah. What about you? Did you remember any hard moments or anything from Mercy City? That <clears throat> yeah, mine was, like, kind of different. Because, so, like, I went to Bible college, and, like, I wanted to be a pastor. So this is really for the people that, like, are, like, I'm called to ministry, and I know I need to serve in ministry. Like, this is for you guys. Um, because I, what I came in, is I came in with my own vision. I came in with my own ideas. I came in with all my own stuff. And I really believed that, like, the way that I heard from God was right and the pastors were wrong. But, like, I wasn't called to pastor that church, right? And, but that was a hard road. Like, that was, like, a three-year road 
But we don't have time for that story, honestly. <laughs> but there was a three-year road of me learning how to submit to authority. And if you're struggling with that, there's a book called Undercover. Alex has probably recommended it um, by John Bevere, Pastor yeah. John Bevere. I would read that book. It changed my life, and it really taught me how to serve somebody else's vision well. And I, was, I actually was just talking about this with our pastor recently because what I was... I mean, I came in very, like, pharisaical, honestly. Like, I, it's my way, and my way is right. And I learned how to submit, and what I realized, because I felt like my dreams were dying, basically. Yeah. Um, but I learned that really what I was doing is planting my seeds in a good field. Mm -hmm. And so if you have dreams for ministry, that's okay. Like, plant them in a healthy field. Like, this is good soil. Yeah. Like, you get a plant in good soil here at Revival, and I would plant your dreams there. Um, so it was, it was just hard for me to learn um, that, like, giftedness and talent is not everything. Yeah. Like, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that book's, a, that book's a game changer, you know? Yeah. yeah. Man, it's been good, guys. I, uh, you know, I think we've only made it through half the questions, and half of them I've just kind of made up just while we were up here, you know? <laughs> I just, I, I want to give you guys a chance, too, before we close out here. Um, yeah, any, yeah, any encouragement, anything else left kind of on your heart that you want to say about the church, um, the mission? Um, man, if you got a, okay, before we do that, you got a funny story. Any, you know, any funny? You know, I, I like stories, you know, I mean, I think everybody loves a good story. You guys got any good stories? Now you're in my wheelhouse. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Spiritual stuff, I don't know. Funny? <laughs> yes, I got that. Uh, probably a couple couple of things uh, that I remember. Um, we have a time at the end of our service for communion, commitment, and prayer, and, and people sometimes come up. And at the time, we were, I would sit on the front row, and this guy came up and was talking to me, and um, and he told me his name was um, uh, Mike Hoff, and he leaned over and said, "My name is Mike Hoff," and told me his story, and, and you know he was trying to trying to get his life back together, his family and all that. And so I prayed for him and I prayed for Mike. And um, he came up kind of late and the band had started playing our final song and it was kind of loud. So um, at the end of me praying for him, he leaned over again and said, um, yeah, my name's Dustin. Um, I was trying to make sure your mic was off. You know, like, <laughs> so I prayed for Mike Hoff. <laughs> That doesn't even sound real. <laughs> it's, it's not. That's it's, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, true story. Uh, and then another time, um, another time, oh, I was uh, in the middle of ser our, our sermon, and um, I just my voice was just gone. I got a tickle that turned into a kind of a cough, you know, like. And I, I don't know if your worship team is like this, but um, in our building, I can see in the foyer, and our, our worship team, including our worship leader, who's our associate. They, as soon as I start preaching, they bail. Like, they're gone. <laughs> I see them in the foyer having a great time, drinking coffee. I can see them through the glass. And nobody's in there. I'm dying. The sound man has gone. Every, I mean, everybody has abandoned me. My voice is gone. And that is a helpless feeling to be in front of people, and you're supposed to be communicating, and you got nothing. And so finally, I'm coughing. I'm hocking, you know, all kinds of stuff. And uh, finally, Greg comes back up, and I'm, I kind of go. We have a little backstage it's like a little hallway and i'm back there coughing i had like 14 guys with every lozenger you can think of bring to me <laughs> finally somebody brought me some water i was coughing greg sticks his head back there and says if hey if you're gonna cough can you turn your mic off you know like <laughs> i'm like every i couldn't figure out why when i coughed everybody laughed like i'm dying like i'm literally dying and they think it's funny right <laughs> And so that's a bad feeling. Um, but what was really cool, and probably the, the, if there's a point to both these stories, it's this. Um, that day, that same service, um, two young ladies came forward and gave their lives to Christ and were baptized that's in Christ. Awesome. And, and it just proves that in our weakness, yeah. he, he reveals himself as strong, right? When, we, when we're a buffoon, right? Yeah. Like, literally, I can be, I'm the, I'm the dumbest guy in the world. Um, <laughs> God reveals himself as the, as the strength in that's all of good. us. And so um, he blessed that time. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Wow, those are, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever bail on me, all right, worship team? All right, don't leave me, don't leave me stranded if I'm choking up there, all right? 
What about you? Any, any funny stories? Anything uh, memorable yeah. from Mercy City? I don't, I'm, I mean, I'm not like a big on the funny guy <laughs> side of things. We got, like, we got comedy, we got serious. If, right, if I already right. told the story, like it wouldn't be funny. Uh, like, that's fine. <laughs> it happened. You know? That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um, Let's have you both close then with like your best, you know, any encouragement, anything yeah. you guys want to say for the church. Yeah. Um, I, I, so what we always talk about, what Pastor Matt always tells us when we come together, um, like when we're getting together as a team or whatever, he uses a story of the wedding at Cana. So if you don't know that story, like it's Jesus' first miracle, he turns water into wine, right? Um, but the the highlight that he always hits on is that like the miracle that took place was not experienced by the people that showed up. The miracle was experienced by the servants, Yeah. right? The ones who served well, and the ones who set up, the ones who served a cup of coffee, the ones who played, uh, did the setup and did the tear down, the ones who put in that effort, they're the ones that are witnessing the miracle. And I think that's important for, because really we're all a part of the setup teardown team right now, honestly. We're small enough, like this is the serve team. Like we're all helping, we're all pitching in, we're all putting our hands to something. And, and you guys are going to witness miracles in that season. Yeah. Um, you're going to see things as you continue to serve the vision of this house, um, you're going to see things that other people don't experience. You're going to see people connect to the, to, um, sorry, I was going to say, we say, we say connect people to the heart of God and the house of God. Yeah. <laughs> but that's like, uh, yeah. that's our, that's, that's what our saying is, you know, but you're going to see people uh, repent, revive, and thrive, right? Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's the vision here. And that's what we want to see. And those are the miracles that you're going to start witnessing in people's lives as you serve them wine. Yeah. Like you get to witness those miracles. Yeah, that's good. I do love that. Like, when you first told me that story, that stood out to me. I was like, man, it never hit me. It's like, yeah, it was the servants mm -hmm. that saw that first miracle. Yeah. It's a cool thing. Uh, I, would, I would love to just encourage Alex and your team. Um, let, I, let me also just say this, that if, if this is working at all, it's mostly not because of Alex. It's probably more. Amen. Well, it's Amen. all about God. It's <laughs> yeah. always about God. But I can t I've never met his wife, but she is a saint, wherever she is. Um, right, <laughs> right? Um, The things that uh, my wife did to make it possible for me to be who God needed me to be, in this, in the, especially in this phase when it's sort of all hands on deck, um, it's because of godly women like you. And so I hope that you know what God's doing through you and, and allowing Alex the time and the team the time to do those things. Uh, and I was, it's funny you mentioned the wedding at Cana because I was, during worship, I was thinking about, um, this is a wedding venue, you yeah. know, and um, I was just thinking about, you know, at the end of this, there's going to be a wedding banquet. And this is a little glimpse of that banquet together, you know, like people from all nations, tongues yeah. and tribes, everybody from, you know, that distant land of North Carolina are going <laughs> to maybe be in heaven and it's going to be a wonderful time. And, and what you're doing here is has eternal consequences and impact. And so don't give up. Um, don't give up. Let God work through you and reach, reach a lot of people so that on that day, um, when the groom, bridegroom comes back for his bride, there'll be more and more people in heaven. So thank you. That's good. Thank you, guys. Thank you both. <laughs>